Welcome to Electron Line. In the previous video, we had the force pushing against the block parallel to the incline. We're looking for the minimum force required to keep the block from sliding down. It's on an incline of 35 degrees. The weight of the block is 500 newtons and the static coefficient of friction is 0.3. Now, it turns out we're going to start with the block from rest, so we only have to worry about the static coefficient of friction. What's the minimum force required to keep the block from starting to move? And so, by pushing perpendicular against the block, we simply increase the component of the weight that pushes the block against the incline, causing friction to exist. We then cause additional force pushing against the incline, therefore additional friction force, and that should be sufficient to keep the block from sliding down. Now, will that require a greater force in this direction compared to the parallel force we had from the previous video, where we realized we needed at least 164 newtons of force to keep the block from sliding down? Well, we're going to find out. Again, we start with the, well, before we start with the equation, we need some vectors on there. So let's draw the known vectors. We have the weight pushing down, which is mg, which creates two components, a component which is perpendicular to the incline and a component which is parallel to the incline. If this angle here, theta, is the same as this angle right there, then this becomes mg times the cosine of theta, and then this becomes mg times the sine of theta. This then creates a force in this direction, a normal force. Now, not just this force right here, but also this force. So the normal force pushing back, and I'm looking for a good color, let me use the orange right here. So the normal force pushing back, in this case the normal force, is going to be the sum of the mg cosine theta plus the force by which we're pushing down on the block because both of those forces are pushing the block against the incline so the normal force is the reactionary force that opposes both of these forces. Newton's third law for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction. And then the friction force, the friction force which will be in this direction, force friction, by definition is the normal force times mu, in this case is the static coefficient of friction because the block is moving and that means we're going to take this whole thing, mg cosine theta plus f, and multiply it times mu sub s to give us the friction force. And so it's the friction force that's now going to prevent the block from sliding down. Again, starting with the equation, f net equals mass times acceleration, and then realizing that the acceleration is going to be equal to zero because we're trying to prevent the block from sliding. We then end up with F net is equal to zero. And of course, the net force is going to consist of forces aiding what we're trying to do minus the forces opposing what we're trying to do. So that would be the forces aiding minus the forces opposing. And those should add up to zero. So what are the aiding forces? Again, what are we trying to do? We're trying to stop the block from sliding. So what's aiding us to do that? In this case, only the friction force. So the aiding force is the friction force, and the opposing force, which is going to try to get the block to move, is going to be mg sine theta, and that is equal to zero. Now, of course, when it's equal to zero, then nothing is going to move. So the minimum force required will of course be what's tied up in the friction force, that's going to be this force right here, this is what we're looking for, what is the minimum force required to make that happen? So let's write that down here, we have the friction force minus mg sine theta, that is going to be equal to zero, now let's replace the friction force by, and I'm going to reverse the order, that will be the force by which we push times mu sub s plus the mg cosine theta times mu sub s, these are the two aiding forces, minus mg sine theta equals zero. Then what we can do is we can move this to the other side, move this to the other side, so now we have f times mu sub s is equal to mg sine theta, because now it becomes positive when we bring, bring it to the other side, minus mg cosine theta 
times mu sub s, and this is beginning to look sim uh, familiar again. We've seen that before. We know what these values are. And now, to get this, we need f minimum, which therefore is going to be greater than or equal to mg sine of theta minus mg cosine theta times mu sub s. And the whole thing divided by this mu sub s over here comes down here, mu sub s, and that's the minimum force required. Okay, f min, let's plug in some numbers. Greater than or equal to mg, which is 500 newtons, times the sine of 35 degrees, minus mg, which is 500 newtons, times the cosine of 35 degrees, times 0 0.30, all divided by 0 0.30. Okay, so F min, well remember, this is what we calculated the previous time. But we'll plug in the numbers with a calculator to see what that's equal to. So we have 500 times 35, take the sign of that equals, that's 286.8 newtons. So F min, greater than or equal to 286.8 newtons, minus 35, take the cosine of that, times 500, times 0.3, that's 122.9, all divided by 0 0.30. So 286.8 minus 122.9, that's 164 rounded off, so it's 163.9 newtons divided by 0 0.3. And so finally, I'll write over here, F min greater than or equal to, divide by 0.3 is equal to 546 newtons. So notice, yes, this method will also stop the block from sliding, but we only need it when we had a force pointing in this direction, like here, parallel to the incline, we only need 164 newtons. When we use a force pushing directly down on the block, just using the friction force to stop us, to stop the block, we will need 546 newtons. So obviously, this requires a lot less force than this. And notice, what about any in-between angle? So the tendency would be to say, well, if it takes 164 newtons if we push this way, and it takes 546 newtons if we push this way, we expect to see an increase from 164 all the way to uh, 546 when we go from here to here. But that's actually not the case. It turns out there's some angle in between that will require less force than either one of these two. And that's really what the question is asking. What is the minimum force required both magnitude and direction. So here, we don't know what that direction is. We need to find the angle at which the force has to push in order to find the actual minimum value. It is not this, and it is not this. It is somewhere in between. So on the next video, we're going to try to find what that angle is. So stay tuned, and we'll show you how to do that. So what's the main difference in this equation compared to the other two? Well, what's the, the difference in equations between this method and the other method? Well, no, the other two previous problems that you did. Remember the one from the first one from the second one is a plus and minus. Okay, correct. So on the very first video that we did, the one of five, we had the sum of the two because we were trying to push the block up. So we had to overcome this force and the friction force, which would then be pointing downward, opposing us trying to move the block upward. So it was the sum of these two. On the video after that, we figured out what force is required to keep the block from sliding downward if the force was pushing up the incline parallel to the incline, so that made this into a negative sign. But we didn't have this component right here, so it was simply the force... Uh-oh, something happened. Our dog? Okay. Uh, so, we didn't have this component right here, so it's simply the force being equal to the difference between the two. In this particular case, since we're pushing down in this direction, we don't have any component pushing up. We only have an additional friction force caused by the additional force pushing down on the block, which is then 
the component that is added is this component right here. So we take the result that we had before, we divide it by this to get the new result, which instead of 164 newtons, it's actually 546 newtons. That's the difference. Uh, F times mu sub s. So this is the new component right here, which makes a difference when we push straight down. That's right. Okay, good observation. All right, now for the real part coming up.